Next thing you'll see is the car crashing into the curb and Sledden running towards it. Body cam video shows Sledden yelling at a juvenile in the passenger seat of the car. The juvenile gets out and lies on the ground. The voice of the juvenile has been removed due to state law and court order, but you can hear Sledden say, I'm not going to hurt you. Sledden handcuffs the passenger as he waits for assistance, and once more officers arrive on scene, Sledden and other officers perform CPR on Crenshaw, who later died from a gunshot to the neck. And there's also body cam and dash cam video of other officers searching for three juveniles who, f who fled the backseat of Crenshaw's car. The State Bureau of Investigation was called to the scene that night and they've investigated since and cleared Corporal Sledden of wrongdoing. He is still on administrative duty pending an internal investigation. In studio, Maria Bone, WXII 12 News. And that body cam footage you just saw has now finally been released to the public eight months after 17 year old Nisanto Crenshaw was shot and killed by that Greensboro police officer during that encounter last August. I spoke to the attorney for the Crenshaw family today who tells me there's still a long way to go. Harry Daniels, who is the attorney representing the Crenshaw family, says the body cam video speaks for itself. He went on to call the shooting tragic and senseless, adding that Nisanto Crenshaw should still be alive today. Even with their public relations narrative that we saw on YouTube as well, uh, saying that the vehicle was coming towards the officer at the time he was shooting, it's simply not true. Uh, as I stated before in multiple press conferences, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at the video. You know, I'm not going to say that the Santal is a saint that he did everything right. I would prefer to him stop that vehicle, uh, you know, and, and, and whatever issue charges deal with it later in the criminal aspect. Uh, but even the decision that he made was bad decision. That decision did not warrant justification of Corporal Sletton putting three bullets in his body and killing him. And Daniel's also saying his team will be making an amendment to its letter to the Department of Justice asking for an additional investigation. The Crenshaw family has filed a federal lawsuit as they continue to seek justice for their loved one. And we have complete coverage of this story on WXII12.com, including a link to the videos released by Greensboro Police today. Elsewhere this afternoon, a man is facing charges after a crash on Highway 52 that killed four people. Winston-Salem Police have charged Pedro Galdamez with four counts of felony death by motor vehicle. He's also charged with DWI and identity theft. Officers say he lied about his identity during processing. He made his first court appearance this morning and could spend more than 20 years in prison if he's convicted on every charge he's facing. Police say earlier this month, Galdamez was driving the wrong way on the highway when he hit another car. Four people were inside that vehicle and all died. Their names are Blanca Bernal, Santa Bernardino, Estefania Hernandez, and Gregoria Jimenez. Happening now, hundreds of jobs are set to come to the triad thanks to an aerospace company based in the UK. We are thrilled to announce that Marshall Aerospace a leading aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul organization has chosen to locate at PTI. Now, Marshall Aerospace says it will build a major maintenance and engineering facility at PTI Airport. And according to the governor's office, the $50 million project will create about 240 jobs. Marshall specializes in maintaining military aircraft, including the C-130 transport aircraft. And it's in a field that we are very strong at, in already here, that being maintenance of aircraft. Uh, we've got a deep bench strength in this community of people who've been doing that for decades, really. And so this is just a huge, huge um, uh, win for the community. And we are told phase one of this project will include space for six C-130s, along with a paint facility, support shops, and office space. It has been nearly five years now since Trooper Samuel Bullard died in Yadkin County, and today family and friends gather to honor his memory and help his name live on. As WXI 12's Joshua Davis shows us, there was also a bridge dedicated to his memory today. Family and friends, representatives of Yadkin County Highway Patrol and the NCDOT came together in Elkin Tuesday to honor the life and service of Trooper Samuel N. Bullard, who died nearly five years ago. 
The bridges on CC Camp Road, located over Big Elkin Creek, will now be known as the Trooper Samuel N. Bullard Bridges. Bullard died in 2018 when he crashed during a chase on I-77 in Yadkin County. Family and friends describe Bullard as a hero who left a legacy of kindness and dedication to service. At the ceremony, we heard from State Senator Eddie Settle. He called Trooper Bullard a good man and someone we should all aspire to be like. May 21st, 2018, he got up like any other day. He got up to serve and to protect. That's what they do, guys. Again, he truly lived the scripture. 